How long was Neil Armstrong actually on the moon? When did Europe start speaking English? Did Marco Polo really go to China? Curiosity Stream is the streaming service for all things history, plus science, wildlife, and more. What's the real story behind the Mona Lisa? We've got that. What caused the collapse of Rome? We know. Where did we find mankind's earliest ancestor? Come find out. For the holidays, get the gift of curiosity with 25% off gift cards for your curious cohorts. It's holiday shopping season at curiositystream.com slash gift. Let's face it, most people aren't making massive turkey feasts on the regular, and after 364 days of not thinking about it, it can be hard to get that bird just right. That's where Instacart, the holiday rescue app, comes in. From getting all the ingredients to prep a full seasonal spread to getting last-minute swamps in a turkey emergency, Instacart has everything a holiday host needs to save face and save dinner. And right now, if you download Instacart, you get free delivery on your first three orders and delivery in as fast as one hour. Offer valid for a limited time. $10 minimum per order. Additional terms apply. A story about Christmas. It is titled Three Men by the outstanding American writer Willis Cooper. <laughs> Another Christmas, a Christmas 30 years ago. It is 1918 and the Great War is over. War weary men are at last getting leave. Leave areas have been established in various parts of France, and men are en route from their stations to these areas, there to rest and refresh themselves for a brief period. It is Christmas Eve in the railway station at Beale Pond. The crowd is dense, and compartments on the train are scarce. The young British officer hurries along the platform looking desperately for an empty seat. I'm from Monkey, I said, come down my line, monsieur. Oh, I beg your pardon. You mean I can get into that one? I can get into that compartment? Oui, 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 oui monsieur. Oh, but, but there's somebody in it now. The trains are full. Yes, again, monsieur. Monty, 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 me. Monty. Oh, oh, thank you very much, I will. I know, I know, monsieur. Oh, there. Oh, yes, a Merry Christmas to you, too. Ah. Uh, excuse me, what? I, uh, I, I mean, I'd like to have uh, Benny in here, if it, it's all right with you. Benny? Uh, no, I can't talk the ruddy language. Uh, it is not necessary to speak the ruddy language, monsieur, since I speak yours after a fashion. Oh, well, the station officer said you wouldn't mind if I spelled myself in here. I should be delighted. Uh, let me help you with your baggage. No, no, that's all right. I'll, I'll just pick it up on the rack. There we go. And uh, shut the door. There. Oh, there's a bit of all right. So clean, too. I've never seen such a clean tray in France. <laughs> they probably scrubbed it out for Christmas. I am uh, Captain Esme Rochefort de Gascoigne of the 212th Regiment Artillery, GPS. Oh, I'm Lieutenant Horace Bennett, one of the Australian Light Horse. Sir. Are you going on leave, Captain? Yes. I'm not sure where yet, mais de la guerre. One never knows where he goes in this war. <laughs> That's too right. And it's very good of you to share your compartment. I'm only too glad. It's been rather a lonely journey so far. I'm delighted that someone to talk to. Our uh, first class compartments aren't too easy to get hold of either. Yeah, it's a bit cushy, isn't it? Well, not too bad indeed. <laughs> You'll pardon me, I know, but uh, I am a bit curious to know how an Australian officer should find his way to the Alphonse. As a matter of fact, I don't quite know myself, Captain. Uh, uh, Gascon, is it? Uh, yes. And your name is uh, Ballantine. I, I must remember. <laughs> right, uh, well, I was at Gallipoli with the 3rd Arthur Division and uh, got a bit of a crack on the head, you know. First thing I knew, I found myself transferred to a village a few miles east of here. Nothing but Americans in it. Ah, the Americans. That good soldiers, eh? Oh, yes, a splendid. And now you find yourself bound for leave on Christmas Eve. Quite well. And jolly glad of it, too. Where are you going, do you know? No report to the RT or the Hailed Man, that's all I know. <laughs> you have the same difficulties in your army, I see. <laughs> one never knows where one goes. You are a long way from home, my friend. Yes, that's right. Ruddy long way. Half around the world, you know. And you have come to fight for France. I salute you, monsieur. Oh, it's a big problem. Oui. 
How do you do, sir? And our young men lie dead under the stars out there. Now, wait a minute. We lost a few, too. Our young men, monsieur. French and British and Australian and American. Hello? One cannot make the omelette without breaking the eggs. That's right. And a ruddy lot of good eggs, too, friend Gascon. Me. Oh, I wish the blasted train would start. There's always a mystery how they control these trains. Particularly when one wishes to go somewhere in a hurry. Hey, there's a chap in American uniform out there looking for the place. I say, sir. Perhaps we could invite him in here if you do not mind. Why not, if it's all right with you? Why, he's a comrade. There is little room on the train. Now you are. Oh, Yank. Yank. Yank, sir. This way, Yank. He comes? Yeah. Darkly pigs now, the bride of black. And an officer, too. That's so? I've heard that the Americans have two divisions of uh, Negroes. They have many officers who are, as the Americans say, colored also. I've never seen one. Oh, uh, this way, Yank. <laughs> you don't mind if I ask him, do you? My dear Valentine, why should one mind? Is he not a man and an ally and an officer? Do we dislike one another because I am French and you are Australian? Good man. Also, what the devil difference does it make what color of chap's skin is, eh? Oh, yes, it's room here. My lord, there's a gentleman. Oh, not much room anywhere. Ready? Come on in. We've got room for one. Uh, thank you. I was afraid I was going to be left behind. My name is Valentine, Lieutenant of Australian Night Off. Well, I'm uh, Captain Melvin of the 370th American Infantry. <laughs> the larger Captain. And uh, this is Captain... Uh, Oh, dear, you'll have to help a chap out here. <laughs> I am Captain Esme Rochefort de Gascoigne. I'm the French artillery captain. Welcome. Oh, gentlemen, I, I thank you. Yeah, give me your musette. I'll shove it up on the rack. Oh, thank you, Lieutenant. Uh, feels good to get that thing off my shoulder. Sit down, Captain Melvin. Oh, thank you. I've been standing around there all day long on one foot and then on the other, waiting. Finally, when the train did pull in, I thought I was still going to stand there. Good of you to take me in. We are delighted, sir. All right, Earl. Uh, you're Australian, eh, Lieutenant? That's right, from Adelaide. But I've lived in England for years. Where are you from, Captain Melvin? I'm from uh, Chicago. Oh, and uh, you, Captain Gascon? My home is in Bayonne, as one might himself for my name. Your name, Captain? Gascon. Uh, G-A-S-C-O-I-G-N-E. Uh, from Gascony, you see. Oh, that's right. Oh, I see. <sighs> you know, gentlemen... It's odd, isn't it? Here we are. Three of us in one railroad coach bound for somewhere. And we've come from all over the world to meet on Christmas Eve in France. <laughs> to tell you the truth, we don't even know where we're going, do you? <laughs> I haven't the slightest idea. Leave area, that's all I know. <laughs> well, we may as well have a spot of Christmas cheer, eh? <laughs> I have a bottle of rather good wine at my music. Yes, so far. Well, not to be outdone in this matter, mes amis, I also have a bottle of Lacrimé Christi. Seals of Christ. A very precious one in these days, gentlemen. I do not remember how I came by it, but uh, suffice it to say I have it. <laughs> ah, we are about to stop. We are starting. Hey, now, that was a jolly happy crowd there at the station, wasn't it? Christmas. Yeah. Still Christmas, despite the fact that most of them all want to get out of the town and go somewhere. Mm hmm. Last Christmas, I was down in Texas in Camp Logan. I was in the hospital with Marseille. And I? I had dinner with a German general. What? A German general? He captured on Christmas Eve. Oh, <laughs> Well, gentlemen, will you drink with me? With pleasure, sir. If you will drink with me. And with me. All right, then, mate. To, uh, to Christmas, eh? To Christmas. Uh, Hello, my miss. That's the ruddy full of junk of all sorts. I was afraid I might have lost that bottle. Uh, souvenirs, huh? Oh, yes. And silly toys and things that I pick up, you know. Give them to some kid somewhere. Yeah. God knows they're few enough. Yeah, it gets to a man, Lizette. 
there. There's no one left of my people to give them to, but it is a sentiment, a sentimental Christmas. Yes, I suppose we all do that. Mine's packed with odds and ends, too. I didn't know if I'd ever get back to the outfit after this leave, so I got some souvenirs together. Another drink, Miss Amy. Oh, not now, thanks, Captain. I'll wait a while. I think I will, too. Right. Oh, it's a beautiful night. Fair. You know, as the war was still on, I'd expect to hear someone shout, Lights out, Jerry up, and have a lot of bombs landing on there. I hope we are done with that, monsieur. Amen. There's no moon, though. Yeah, but look at the stars. I said, you see that one over there? <laughs> Why do you imagine it to the star of Bethlehem? Huh? Very bright, isn't it? Yeah. Really? Nearly yeah, 2,000 years ago. I wonder where that same star will shine in the front of here. Well, if it does, we wouldn't know it. Not we who fight wars and deny the name of the man that was born under it. Hey, you were... You were religious, Jeff? No, not at all, Lieutenant. A long way from it. I'm not religious either. Oh, we used to have some jolly times as a kid at Christmas time. Church things, all that, you know, candles and whatnot. Yeah, me. Mm. One is not a religious save when one sees a star shining down on you. I wonder if that could be the star. And why not, my friend? Our earth changes, but the everlasting stars change not. It's funny if it is, wouldn't it? Me. Mm. Oh, but our journey is long, gentlemen. If you wish to sleep. You sleepy, Captain? <laughs> this so little drink of wine has affected me, I fear. I cannot keep my eyes open. <laughs> I'm a little tired myself. Standing around all day in that station, there's no place to sit down. Well, I can always sleep myself. I propose then that we do sleep for a little while, my friend. Uh, talking of sleeping, you've made me sleep. Yeah, I'm all for it. Shall I turn down the lights? You do, monsieur. Pleasant dreams. And you are your Noel. Merry Christmas to you both. And to you, Lieutenant Valentine. Captain, that's fine. And the star shall watch over it, Mister. The star that shone on Bethlehem. You know, it seems that I have met you both before somewhere. That's very odd. What, my friend? I... I was thinking the same thing. Yeah. I was, too. Oh, but it couldn't be. One from France, one from Australia, one from America. Wait. Oui. It is so. Good night, my friend. Good night, my friend. my friend, did Star not promise us a sign? Are we to travel on like this forever? Be not a faint heart, Balthazar. The end of our journey is at hand. The wind is bitter in this strange country. Oh, God, for what I do with we. For how many days now have we traveled? I can no longer count. And I just thought, yes, sir. I'm tired and weary. And I, friend Arbeza, I would fain rest. Have faith, my friend. Arbeza, Melchior, have faith. 
We have faith of Gaspar. Aye. Lead on, Gaspar. Whither thou goest, there will we follow thee. Though we be but three lone men traveling in a strange country in the dead of night, yet we know that thou art inspired of God, and that his hand doth leave thee. Yet not even I know what miracle he will do before our eyes. No matter. We will follow on the road to death. Now, which road takest thou? Back to the right hand or to the left? I know not. Wilt thou not call upon God, Gaspar? I kneel down, brethren. O oh, Lord, Father God, lead us thy servants in the way that thou didst set out for us. For know, O oh Lord, Father God, that we are poor, and our eyes know not the right, and we would follow the way that thou wilt have us follow. Therefore we pray oh, thee humbly. A miracle! A miracle! A miracle! What sayest thou about thee, sir? Behold, yes, sir. A sign from the Lord, Father God. There is no sign. Behold, in the sky. A sign. A sign. A star. A sign is brighter than all the stars of the heavens. Oh, Lord God, we thank thee. The way is before us. We follow thy will. But, oh, yes, sir. The star shineth upon the pathway to the left. Forward, forward, brethren, for the end of our journeying is at hand. Still, this is a sign from God. Behold, Gaspar, beyond the hill, the lights of a village. It is so. Now are we come to our destination indeed. Haste, haste. Oh, travelers, go! Have you seen the star? Who goes? Who art thou? Here's the shepherd. See the flocks of sheep beyond the road. It's not the star, travelers. No star, its meaning. Aye, we have seen it, O oh shepherd. Yet we know not its meaning, save that the miracle of the Lord, Father God, is nigh unto us. Yeah, from the blackness of the sky, it sprang into blaze. Oh, travelers, dost thou think it portend the end of earth? Nay, friend. Not the end of earth. Say, rather, its beginning. What? Behold, the shepherd, the mantle of the Lord is upon him. Verily, he speak as men that understand the workings of the will of God. Say now, shepherd, how is yonder fellow's named? Uh, surely, you know what shall come to pass because of the star. How is it you know not the name of the town? We have come from far lands, O shepherd. Aye, what does it matter if we know not such titles as the name of the village? When we do know of a miracle to be wrought in the name of Almighty God. Aye, it is so. Uh, what miracle shall come to pass? It is hidden from our ken, O shepherd. Yes, it shall come to pass. Fear not. Aye, and such a miracle as shall set all the world to singing praises. Ye be not of Israel. Nay, I am from the lands of the Greeks. And these my companions be also from far lands. Melchior from Ethiopia, and thou sayest of a wise man of Egypt, a soothsayer unto the king. Mm, he has come fast. I so. Since many days our feet have trod the pathways of hidden, unknown places, yet always have we set our faces unto the east, obeying the bidding of a voice unheard, the guidance of a hand unfelt. And he goes now unto the town. Shepherd. Thou hast not told us his name. Oh, it is. All men know that yonder town is called the town of the house of bread, even Bethlehem. Now this night shall be born in Bethlehem, that Messiah, that very Son of God, which the ancient prophets have foretold. And this is the miracle that shall come to pass. For he shall be born of a virgin, immaculate. And his name shall be Jesus, called Christ. Oh, oh, holy man, may I not go with thee, seeing that thou knowest not the village, and I with my brethren were, were born there. Aye, thou mayst come with us, but haste, 
Hey, and behold the star, how it seemeth to beckon us on. Fling thy burden from thy shoulders. Hey, hey. I, I marvel also that there should be lights of God in the town. The hour is passing late. Yet there is a light in every house. Perchance the men of Bethlehem rejoice that the Messiah is born. Nay, not so, for he is hidden from men, and they of Bethlehem know him not. Then what hey, the feast of Hanukkah is but lately over, my master. The feast of the light in memory of the Maccabee. And thus is the city full, even all the inns. But just on over we shall find him, O Gaston. Hath it been revealed unto thee? All in good time, my friend. We follow the star. Uh, uh, behold, these be the walls of Bethlehem, O wise man. Uh, yonder lieth the gate. Perchance the soldiers of the Tequa may refuse us admission into the city, Gaston. Nay, hey, they are gone away, Melchior. Uh, they all lie in the inns, in the public houses, and they carouse with the people of the town. Gaston, art thou sure indeed that we shall find him in Bethlehem? Dost doubt the word of God, thou Pazer? On, we must go on. But whither go with we, O Lord Gaston? Name me not Lord Shepherd, for we are all humble men in the sight of God. Praise God. God. Behold, how the rays of the star shine down upon this certain street. It is the way. Follow. Hello, one comes, Gaston. In haste. I so. The giant Pino. No. No, man. Whither goest thou? Who art thou? Stand aside that I may pass. Who art thou? No, that I am citizen even as thou art. Oh, oh, oh. Speak thou thus to me, who am the great physician. Please, the tongue, crack it, crack it. Didst thou say that thou art sure to no man of Bethlehem? I, I am that. I am also wrestler with the angel of death. Hold thy craving. Hast thou attended woman this life that was brought a child? Hmm? And how dost thou know that, stranger? Wilt thou say I or nay? I, I have done so. And look ye now. This night I have come upon a miracle. A very marvel. A prophecy of nature. Speak of the marvel that thou hast witnessed, man. And behold, not two hours have passed since one came post-haste crying before my door. O thou O oh, most noble surgeon, O oh, savor of lions, come down and haste. A woman hath need to be in the stable nigh unto the end of the two oxen. In the stable? I, the stable. Sir, now I, I am a man of charity and always ready to answer the call when sickness stalk us abroad. So I flung my cloak about me and went in haste. <laughs> As it will become of the man of my age and girth, yet I am charitable, I say. And behold, in yonder stable was a woman, couched in the straw of a manger, brought to bed of a child. Uh, surely men... Women have been brought to bed of a child in stables before, Tinez. Aye, so. But mark me well now. This woman was a virgin. Yes. I swear it. By the holy flaxes, by my father's beard, I swear it. Verily, a child born unto her, and she a virgin. Ah, thou drunk too much of thy sad prosit, neighbor, for thou a physician. I swear oh. it. Verily hast thou stood before a miracle this night. A miracle in sooth a very prophet. Where is the woman thou didst attend? Uh, in yonder stable. The men did say they had come from uh, Nazareth in Galilee to give us testimony to the tax collectors. And though they beseeched the innkeepers, yet none would give them room, saving only this one. Who, having pity upon a woman with child, is saying to them they might find them amongst the kind in the stable, and did charge them not. Now may all the blessings of God be on this innkeeper. For that he hath offered a shelter this night unto the Son of God. Eh? What sayest thou? And on thee, physician. For that thou didst lend thy hand unto her who is the very mother of him who shall be the savior of the world. And verily, I know not who thou art, O man. Yet I perceive that thou hast the gift of prophecy. The babe did look upon me with a look that I shall never forget. But if thou dost speak soon, I am most blessed amongst men. Thine was the hand that first touched him. Verily art thou blessed. I thank thee for thy grace, friend. Go now, inside the stable. Come, my two good friends, and fall down and worship the infant Jesus, son of God. 
which shall be called the Christ. Praise unto him. Praise. Praise unto the Son of God. I, I will not go in. I am not worthy. Nay, shepherd. There be none of us worthy to touch his hand. Yet, there be none too humble to do him reverence. Come. I come, shepherd. Ha! Ah. Arena for this place. Saddles fall upon us. The star hell is before his glory. Nay, nay, Gaspar. Behold, behold in the sky a sign, a sign. Oh, Father Lord, a sign. The shape of a man crucified upon a cross. Dream of three men, Melvin. Uh, yes, I, I did too. Yes, and Melchior. Uh, no favor. Yes, and Melvin. Valentine. Look at our shoes. Look at our shoes. Out of us. What straw? Oh, yes. Straw from a stable. And that favor. What is it, gentlemen? I I have been in the East. I know what that smell is. It's myrrh and frankincense. of the Palmetto Porch, an original podcast from Discover South Carolina. I'm Devin Whitmire. Join me as I get to the heart of what makes South Carolina such a great place to visit by speaking to the locals who make it so special. Premiering December 5th, find the Palmetto Porch wherever you get your podcasts. And for more information about our show, visit scpalmettoporch.com. With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.